Good morning. Good morning. It is indeed a pleasure to be asked to say the daily word. I envision all people building a world of peace on a foundation of love. From my limited human perspective, I may feel powerless as I consider the news of the world. The reality is this. I am a channel through which divine energies of peace and love flow freely. I use the words I am with care because they are my spiritual identity, the name of God nature within me. So I joyfully claim and express these energies by affirming I am peace. Doing so, I contribute to the creative focus that will bring a world of peace and love into expression. Today I make a conscious choice to experience peace. Even at the slightest appearance of conflict, I know the choices I make today will manifest themselves to the world in a wonderful, transformative way. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Colossians 3, 15. Thank you.
an ebb and flow of spirit inside of us, expressing through us. Allow it and be grateful for your breath. Knowing that each breath is a reminder, a reminder of who you are, a magnificent, beautiful child of the most powerful force of the universe. Relish those moments that you are aware of that. That you've become aware of pure being and your oneness with it. Relish them. Allow your heart to go deeper, deeper into you, God, into God. And in that place, allow the still, small voice, the spirit, to speak to you. Take a few moments now to just be in that space of silence. And now gently return, return to this now moment with a heart full of gratitude and knowing that you can go to that place within with every breath that you take at any moment, wherever you are. And spend as much time as you want there. So take another deep breath. Peaceful, loving breath. And return gently to the here and the now, knowing that that presence is always, always enfolding you. Remember, remember, Namaste.
me again. Good morning. Good morning. Is it me, or are you feeling the sacredness of our space today? Beautiful. As I was preparing for this talk, I was thinking about all the advances that we have had in technology. We have had immense advances that have made our lives so much easier. It made them a lot more interesting to me, to be honest with you. And we have made breakthroughs in medicine that would astonish anyone who lived just a few years ago. We're living longer, more productive lives. And you would think with all of this progress that we have, that we would be a happy a lot. <laughs> but we're not. We are not. And that's very easy to see. Just turn on the television, or read a newspaper, or talk to a neighbor. And when you do, you realize that humanity, humanity is fragmented. There is something missing. With all that we have done, our soul is still yearning. It is yearning for something that nothing in this outer realm can really give. Because what it yearns for is within. And the only way that we can enter into that internal vastness that exists within us is through prayer. Prayer is the most important spiritual practice that we can invest time in. <coughs> prayer awakens us from the illusion that we have created. Charles Fillmore, who is the co-founder of our unity movement said that prayer, true prayer, brings about an exalted radiation of energy. And when it is accompanied by faith and judgment and love, the word of truth will burst forth in a stream of light that when held in mind, illumines, uplifts, and glorifies. <coughs> When was the last time you felt like that in prayer? <laughs> yeah. You know, we really need to understand what prayer is. Jesus said that when you pray, you go into thy closet and you close the door. And the Father, who is in secret, will see you in the secret will hear you in the spirit and will answer your prayers. Now, Jesus was never talking literally. You see, Jesus lived a life of prayer. And because he lived a life of prayer, his mind was illumined with profound truth. So every word out of his mouth was packed with the power of truth. In his moments of prayer, he was able to receive the illumination that he needed to understand who he was and what he was. He was able to understand that there was this one power and this one presence that, ex that was always, always <coughs> with him, a part of him. And he began to understand that that allness of God that was individualized in him, that he was the very expression of God. And he would try to share that with his disciples, to let them know this powerful truth. He wanted them to know that it's in themselves as well, and that it's not only in themselves, but in every living being that walks on this earth. So that means that you and I have the same allness of God individualized in us, that you and I are also a child of God. Jesus understood that when you go into that inner chamber, 
that that was really your spiritual consciousness. He wasn't talking about a door, a closet, and you go in there and you close the door. He never talked literally, ever. He was talking about our spiritual consciousness. And so what prayer is, in a way, actually what prayer is, period, is being able to move from our sense consciousness, our ego, that is always filled with thoughts that are fixated on this outer realm, to move from that space, move higher into the space of your Christ consciousness. And when you move into that space, you cannot bring those outer thoughts that are fixated in the world. You need to shut the door. They're not welcomed. And so you spend some time doing that work of eliminating those thoughts so that when you enter into the secret place of the Most High, to become aware of your oneness with the magnificent presence, pure being, you don't want to bring anything out the outside in. It's sacred. You want to you turn it off and close the door. And that's what he meant, go into your closet and close the door. And make union with God. Because it's only in that place. He's not you making union. Let me, let me clarify that. Because that would imply that there's separation. And there is never any, ever, separation. You're not making union with God. You are becoming aware in that space. We are becoming aware of the truth of our oneness with God. That's the difference. We're not making any union. The union already exists. God never left. And when we go into the inner chambers, as I said, we become centered in the allness of God. And we do not pray begging, ever. We don't need to plead or to beg. Because, and I don't know about you, I used to do that. I used to come into prayer, something like this, because this is the way I was taught. Dear Heavenly Magnificent Lord, you who realm, live in the realm of magnificent kingdom, I humbly come to you. I know that I am not worthy, but I dare to ask you. And then the rest of my prayers were pleading and beseeching God to either rescue me from an experience or give me something that I wanted. But that is not what we're called to do. That is definitely not what Jesus tells us to do. He said, you need not ask God anything, because he already knows what you are in need of. You just got to become aware of that. It says that when you pray, you begin to affirm, and you begin to declare the truth that you actually know. So you come with that openness, that oneness of knowing, that awareness of knowing, not pleading. Because, you see, when we become conditioned to pleading, this is what we become. Here's what Charles Fulmer said, because very insightful words. He said, we have been so persistently taught that prayer consists in asking God for some human need that we have lost sight. We have lost sight of our spiritual identity and have become a race of praying beggars. <laughs> yes, we have. You see, I used to think that I was praying to a being that was like a person, only had supernatural powers. God is not a person. It is the everlasting flow that permeates everything that is. It is the very ground of your being. Can you feel that? The very ground of your being, vibrating, Constantly, through every cell of your body, illuminating with light and love and power. This allness of God is what we need to become aware of. And we do that through prayer. Do that through prayer. When you meditate on those thoughts, oh my goodness, my, my legs are shaking. <laughs> and the other thing is that when we realize that, that this presence is always with us, is always in union with us, then we recognize that every thought, every single thought is a prayer. Every single thought. So, 
Have you been mindful of your thoughts? Have you really been monitoring what you're thinking? <laughs> you see, God doesn't go away. He doesn't stop. That presence that you can tap into and manifest from doesn't go away. It's always available for you to manifest into your existence when you desire. So if you're thinking it, guess what? You're going to create it. Yes, unity's third principle. What does it say? We create our reality by our thinking, our thoughts. So if you're thinking it, you're praying it, you're manifesting it into your experience. So it doesn't pay to go around saying, I am an abundant child of God. And then the rest of the day, oh my God, I have no I have enough. <laughs> I don't have time. I can't do that. Oh my God, I don't have enough energy. So what are you manifesting? Yes. Think about it. Your thoughts are prayers. And so we need to be able to, it might be a good idea to begin to condition our thoughts, wouldn't you think? Mm -hmm. To begin to monitor them. And in Unity, I love, 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 love how Unity gives us the tools to do the things that we're being asked to do. In Unity, there's a practice of denials and affirmations. And what denials do is that they allow you to release the thoughts that have been anchored in your consciousness and replace them with thoughts of truth. A denial does not mean that you are negating the experience. What a denial means is that you're not giving it any power. So you can begin to use those tools of denial and affirmation so that your mind is consistently focused on the truth that you know, that you are a child of God, that you have everything, everything. The kingdom of God is within you, and the, it's the Father's good pleasure to give it to you. Everything is within you. And so prayer helps us. In unity, we use affirmative prayer. In an affirmative prayer, that's exactly what we do. We begin to create the environment so that we can enter into the secret place, close the door, and be in that space where we can listen to the still, small voice of God. So what does a denial look like? Because I know sometimes people ask me, well, what does that mean, that denial thing? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, Suppose you had a really bad day. Somebody said something that made you feel bad. They hurt your feelings, you know? And you're feeling kind of down and out, and not you know, snobbish, maybe, or critical, or whatever. Now, you have a choice, because choice is a fundamental human gift. So you have a choice to linger on that, and the more you think about it, the more power you're giving it, and the more you're manifesting an experience in your life that is unwelcomed. Or you can choose to release the power that that experience is trying to bring into your life. <clears throat> and so your denial can be something. I deny any power that that experience has given me, any power that those words are trying to manifest in my life. I deny that. I know, and then you affirm it, I know I'm a magnificent, perfect, whole child of God. And that I can, with the free-flowing love of God, forgive that person and move on. Mm -hmm. That way you are cleansing your mind of all those things that no longer serve you. You don't have to give it power. It's there. You know, there's a rule that says, what others think of you is none of your business, none of my business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really true. <laughs> it only becomes our business when we decide we want to have it become our business. So prayer is a magnificent thing. When you pray, pray for the awareness of the oneness that you are with God. Pray that that awareness of who you are becomes 
grounded in you. Pray for the divine ideas that exist in the realm of possibilities because the divine ideas are the answer to prayer. You have an unlimited source of potential waiting for you in the form of divine ideas. And once you connect to that, once you realize that, you can manifest your experience based on the level of your consciousness, based on the level of your faith. Then, oh my goodness, there is no mountain that you cannot overcome. No experience. For the Lord thy God is with you always. Now, I've been talking about prayer kind of hidden here and there, but I, I do want to give you the steps that Unity teaches us how to pray. As I said, it is based on Jesus' teaching that ask and you shall receive according to your faith. So Unity has, the affirmative prayer process has about five steps. The first step is that you find a place, find a place where you can relax and be alone. So that you can do the work that needs to be done before you enter into the secret chamber, the inner chamber of your heart. In that place is where you begin to take inventory. What am I thinking? What's burning me? And then begin to do the work of denial, of releasing it from your consciousness. And begin to do the work of affirming the truth. And when you sense that your mind, you've felt the power, that has been released, and no longer has any power over you, and you are centered in that truth, begin to concentrate on whatever that truth that comes to you, because it will come to you. Sometimes it may sound like, I am, God is. I am, God is. That's such a powerful truth. And focus on that. Focus on that. Make it like a mantra. So anytime that those unwanted thoughts want to kind of creep in, you know, I am God is. Or maybe it is, I am the peace of God. Or maybe it is, peace be still. Whatever that truth is, begin to use it as a mantra. And then what will happen is that you will gently move into a state of meditation. Oh. <coughs> beautiful, blissful stage. At that point, what you've done is you've shut the door. You're in your inner chamber. You shut the door, and you are ready to listen. So relish, relish those moments that you are in meditation. And wait. Don't be in a hurry. Time is eternal. Wait. And in that stillness, hmm, you will hear what is yours to hear. The mind is being illumined, as Charles Fillmore, with this radiant energy, bursting flows of light that will glorify. And then, when you've known that you've visited, and sometimes it doesn't become, a, you don't become consciously aware of it right away. It'll take some time. But know that you have been in union with God, in the awareness of you, you already made that connection. And so when before, it's that part is called the realization, that's number four. So you had preparation, getting ready, then you've had concentration, meditation, and you've, re you've received the illumination of spirit. And before you leave, give thanks. That's how we pray, not begging or pleading. My hope for you this week is that you begin to practice mindfulness. Begin to practice your denials and affirmations. Begin to practice affirmative prayer. Lately, my mornings have begun with this meditation from this book called The Voice of the Master. And I want to leave you with these words that came this morning, believe it or not. I said, oh, how, how spirit works? It says, mingle with me. When your cup of life is held open to receive the inflow of my divine expression, 
All that is like unto me shall fill and unfold your very being. You shall partake of my divine qualities. Think for a moment what this means. I am health. Health shall fill every cell of your body and flesh. I am sight. I am strength. I am courage. I am also all of the tender qualities of love, peace, and sympathy. I am joy and wisdom, all qualities of the mind that are creative and life-giving. You partake of and you share with me. So come often, my beloved. Mingle your soul with me, the great oversoul of the universe, and I will enrich you in order that you may be a worthy channel for the work that would I would carry out through you. Namaste. Namaste.